You know, when people are flooded with their feelings, it's definitely an example of chaos. And when people are cut off, it's an example of rigidity. But you also see people are living mostly on the left hemisphere, and they're very cut off from their feelings. They're very logical, linear, and when you really get to know them deeply, they're just literally cut off from the imagery of dreams, they're cut off from the holistic sense of things, they lose context, you know, they can't read nonverbal signals. And, that, and you can find these two forms of impaired integration can be very present in a cut-off person's life. In contrast, the person who, you know, is flooded by feelings may be living too much in their right hemisphere without the balance of the left, because you need both together to live a balanced and creative life, I believe. Um, or you may find them having excess um, input from the subcortical region firing up into the right hemisphere. They're constantly aware of every little feeling they have and, you know, they have no balance going on there. So they're just at the whim of whatever these lower areas are doing. So when you look at it that way, then you say, well, that person needs to have a little more logic in their lives. They need to have exercises to soothe them. They need to use relaxation techniques, guided imagery, all sorts of things that bring the two hemispheres together and evoke words to help them, you know, so that they say, you know, wow, um, here's a feeling of, you know, fear, anger, whatever it is. And this is the idea of naming it to tame it, you know, is that studies actually show that when people also practice mindfulness, when they have some mindfulness traits inside of them, when you put them in a scanner and you show them an emotionally evocative face and the lower area, the amygdala and the limbic area lights up, if they name the feeling accurately, the whole system calms down. So the left hemisphere is very important for balancing an excessively reactive right and subcortical area. That's what that study shows. But it can't be done without mindfulness. You have to teach people this capacity for mindfulness, which ultimately, I believe, is setting up a very strong hub of the wheel of awareness and allowing the rim to become separate so a person could sit there in the hub and say, wow, there's a feeling of fury, there's a feeling of frustration, there's a feeling of sadness. Interesting, rather than, I'm sad, oh, it's terrible, terrible. You know, to separate awareness from that which it's aware of is an empowering form of integration. But it's very empowering because it allows a person not to shut off feelings, but to be fully present with them, but just not swallowed up by them. Okay, so mindfulness practice has been shown to not only stimulate the insula, which brings up data from these subcortical areas upward, but it actually strengthens it. It makes it thicker. Uh, and so when a person is uh, more in touch with themselves, they have a more robust insula. And the beautiful thing about that is that the more robust your insula response, the more empathy you have for others. That's been demonstrated. So we have a win-win situation. You actually get to know yourself better, and you become more balanced in your own emotional response, and you become more compassionate for other people.